Well, what's up on my Power Ass Crew? Today's video, we're doing ring gear, but the video before that, we did pinion gear. The video before that, we talked about yokes, not egg yokes, strap yokes versus U-boat yokes. And the video before that, went through the whole spiel by setting up to do the ring and pinion. And since we're setting up the teeth pattern on the ring gear, we're also going to be going over pinion depth some more and pinion preload some more. Cool? All right. Nothing gabbing. Let's get on with it. So we got all my shims all laid out, and these are a 30,000 stack, 10,000s, 5,000s, 3,000s. And so you just take your calipers, go against it like that, and you measure them out. These are measuring 30,000s. Uh, yeah, my display looks a little bit foggy, don't it? Years ago, Nashville had a really bad flood, and I had like a foot and a half, almost two feet of water running through my shop. And these happen to be in a cabinet that I store these down kind of low. Yeah. So my tools got flooded, but hey, I survived, it's all good. So this is my locker depth, the one I'm putting in, my original depth I pulled out. My shim stack measured about 50 thousandths each side, so I'm gonna start out with 50 on each side and measure them out from there. Of course, I'll be adding, removing shim stacks as I go to figure out how much do I actually need. After I put my shims in place, I got my setup bearings. I went over this in a previous video. If you look inside there, you can see the little sanding marks. That's where I took my air die grinder and a sanding drum. Kept going through it like it's right here. Until I got all that uh, opened up. I just, little by little, take a little bit out, test it. A little bit out, test it until you get this. You want just a slice of pressure, put some in place. That way we're going to change your shims. You can just take your bearings, pull them on and off. The race itself does not move. It is just, 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 just tight enough. I've got to just, I have to put a little bit of pressure to it. So that will allow me to trade out my shims one side to another to move the differential back and forth or move the ring gear back and forth. So I got it set up on each side. Slide in, see what we get. The shims I put in there were too wide to actually go into the uh, differential itself. So all I've got in there right now is a 30,000s here and a 30,000s here. That's all I've got in there for the moment. And I can feel a backlash, but I need to put my tool up there to measure the actual backlash to see where we're at back in a moment i'll show you how that's done what we're working on right now is the ring gear backlash and what backlash is this ring gear right here if you listen real close i'm going to quit gabbing look maybe you'll pick it up the little tapping sound back and forth what that is is whenever you move the ring gear back and forth these teeth are meshing with the pinion gear back there they lock together like this so whenever i move it up and down that's the clearance between the ring gear and the pinion gear meaning if you got your let's lock your fingers together my skis are eating me up out of here let's lock your fingers together like this see moving back and forth you can't because you got no backlash Open your fingers up. Boom, 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 boom. The gap between your fingers right there, that's the backlash there. Same as your gears. Ring gear meshing with your pinion gear right there. The click, 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 click. That's your click, click, click back there. It's the mesh between ring gear, pinion, is your backlash. So, so turn on my uh, gauge. I was using my dial one, but my dial keeps on the sticks. It's here, it's supposed to go up and down real free. The one I used for my needle, it was just wanting to be cantankerous and stick, so therefore I just used this one. So, zero that out. Okay, so right there. Zero it out, and then when I push up on the ring gear, it's going to tell me how much of uh, clearance I've got between the teeth of my ring and pinion gear. So push up, click. I got seven thousandths clearance. Pull it down, up, right there, zero, push up, seven thousandths, and that is good. That's about seven, seven and a half. So just to double check, and just to double check, right there, it says six to ten thousandths. So I am on the bottom end of it, which I like. That clearance being a little on the tighter side. So six to ten thousandths clearance is good, but now here's the deal. Now we got to take that grease painted on the gears and rotate it to see where the teeth, where the pinion gear meshes on the teeth here. If it's too shallow, too deep, whatever the case may be, and so we still need to play. So we still may have to adjust that pinion simply because 
the pinion gear coming back and forth like this meshing into your ring gear here if it's too deep it's going to make my wear pattern you know too far outward if it's too shallow so it's just not going to be right i'll show you the wear patterns as we do them so therefore you kind of get an indication do we need to go deeper do we need to go shallower or whatever so yeah i'm gonna get my grease slime paint it on the gears and see what we can get needs to go deeper by a lot so you can see the wear pattern right here and it's a little it needs to go back so what I'm probably gonna do is pull the carrier back out again pull the yoke off the pinion gear again pull the pinion out again pull five thousandths out of the pinion let that pattern move back some and if I need to move a little bit more I'll know uh, about ten thousand I've got a feeling it'll be a little bit extreme so, pull the pinion out and take out the shim, which is in that race back yonder. I'll show you in a minute. So, all right, taking out the shim, yay. So, got the pinion out, and then behind this race right here is where the setup shims are. Uh, yeah. Right there. So let me measure them and adjust about five thousandths out of them. So here's my shim stack for my opinion that sets the pinion depth. That one is a three, three thousand. The rest of those are ten thousandths. Then of course you got the oil control thing right there. So I went and got the rest of my shim stack that came with the uh, rebuild kit. There's a five thousandths in that. So I'm going to take a ten thousand out, put a five thousand in taking five thousandths out of the pinion depth. Then you stack them back in like that. There's your shim stack in the middle with that washer and having that setup race right there. See how the surface has been kind of ground down? Yeah, that makes life so much easier. Slide it back in. So we got the pinion reinstalled. I still need to mess with my pinion preload because it's a bit on the loose side. But this, at least when I put my carrier back in and check the gears, and see where my wear pattern is at, that at least tell me that that 5,000 went the right direction. There's what I'm talking about, much better. I ended up taking 15,000 out of the depth, pushing the pinion back that way, away from the ring gear. Yep, here we can see, get out of the shadows, because I am working by light. I, I got a shop light out here working now. You can see where it falls right there. <sighs> looky, 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 I got that pattern. So I still got a little too much backlash, so I'm going to take a shim, add over here, remove over here to move the ring gear over this way. Just so I probably, I want to shoot for about five thousandths or so, but she got a little bit too much kickly clack. And look at the top of the gear. Look where she's sitting. Just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So here's where we add on the setup. It's supposed to be no higher than 10 thousandths. We're at nine, so we're good there. Now let me take my indicator off and we'll go over the pattern here. Now when you mix up your gear paint, take, you're gonna have this little tube right here. Squeeze you a little bit off in there. I mean, it's just pretty daggone thick, so you don't wanna use it by itself. You squeeze it off in there. I'll tell you what, I'll mix up a little bit for you. See, coming out right there. I mean, this stuff is crazy thick. You don't need much. Just put a little dollop in there. A little tiny dollop. Gear oil. Paint my hood. Put your little. Be careful now. You don't want to get crazy. It just come run out on you. Then just take your brush. You mix it up. And you don't want it dripping off your brush. You just want it where it kind of sticks to the brush a little bit. Kind of like a 
back in the day when we used to build model cars and you had your model car paint, you wanted about that thickness, maybe a little thicker. You don't want it to run on your teeth of the gears. So if you take, I'll come up here and I'll paint this. It's a little bit thin because I've got a little bit of a run right there. So what I do, if it's a little bit thin, put a little dowel of this in there and mix it up till I get it to consistency where I can just paint it on there and it not rub off, not run down. Because if it's going to run down on this, it's going to run down on your teeth and you're not going to get accurate markings. Now let's check out that pattern. Look at that. Ooh, sweet, sweet, sweet. Roll those gears on up there. Look at Yonda. Nailed it. Now one thing I need to point out to you guys that you didn't see me do as I was going through, going through all this rig roll. Whenever I pulled the carrier out at the very beginning, the carrier was pretty loose. I mean, it's like I took the caps off and the carrier just about slid right out. And that's a bad thing. What you want is put an extra set of shim, maybe it's 3,000 shim or whatever you need. Once you get your backlash set, one side or another, you need a little bit of the extra shim, but don't mess up your backlash in the process. Because you want to be able to, whenever you put your carrier in, uh, let me grab my hammer real quick. Using that right there, beating the gears and the carrier to hammer that thing in place. You want a little bit of interference fit between the ends. Some people you can get a, a carrier spreader. It's the thing that goes here to here, comes over top of it, and you just a uh, threaded rod. And what it does is spreads and, sp and opens up the case just enough. You would think that you can't flex this, but those uh, carrier spread, the uh, case spreaders, whatever you call them. They put just enough pressure on it that it allows the carrier to come in and out. And then once you take the case spreader and lay it down, you know, it squeezes this in because you want a little bit of a preload on your bearings. And the reason for the preload is whenever you've got your um, pinion gear working, it's magic turning the ring gear. It doesn't allow the carrier to flex back and forth. So you want a little bit of a squeeze on your bearings. So basically in short, get your backlash set up. And if it's a little bit on the loose side, Put you an extra shim over here to squeeze these bearings in for your preload. Then check your backlash again. So I've got some good squeeze going on because I got to take my hammer and drive it in there. And you see my backlash is sitting right about nine thousandths, which is good. It's inside specs. So at this point, I do believe it's ready for me to start pressing bearings. So I take out my setup bearings. Those will slide off. Put on my real bearings. Put them on the press. Press them on place and button this baby up. Got the carrier pried out. There it is. I had to sit me some bar stock underneath that thing, kept wedging on it to pull it out of there, which means it's fitting like it should. If you notice right through here, this is where your bearing race is set up, and you got right here. That's where the size of the bearing race is going to set up against that, and it's going to cause that preload if you've got the proper amount of shims in there. Again, it's about how tight it fits inside the carrier, but it's also about setting that up backlash so you got to do both of those at the same time yeah it's kind of complicated like that yeah so now get that pinion out so i can press the race inside here that's behind that yep got the shoke adapter harmonic balancer puller run the balls through like that crank it down i'll take the breaker bar let it hit against my lead so i don't have to hold that take the ratchet crank it and it pulls that yoke right on off now that i've got the yoke pulled off i can't really show you but on the setup, once it was all complete, I ended up with about 15 inch pounds of preload on my pinion. Not an absolute necessity, but these driver kits are here for seals, bearings, and it says bearing race seal driver set. Yes. Like I said, not necessarily a necessity, but they absolutely do help. You see at this race right here I'm about to drive in, it is the exact same diameter. And some of you are gonna call me out and say, well, you're supposed to turn another wire on and go for the race. But this part right here is actually hitting on the side of the face right here. So as long as your perimeter here, your diameter is setting like that. See how nice and even that is? That'll drive her on home. It'll work out just fine. Now, not that it really wasn't before because I took brake clearing, cleaned it all out real well. But all the taking it out, putting it in, taking it out, putting it in. I just want to be sure everything's good and clean on the inside before we start driving this thing home. Make sure everything is nice and clean. All the places your races are going to set, your bearings are going to set. Because anything, if you got trash in the way of any of your bearing caps, 
races, whatever, it can alter your settings. Even though I was doing the setup and I'm good, I already know that. But hey, I'm just reiterating. Get your stuff clean. Alright. And up aside here, still got the same shim stack that sets your uh, pinion depth engagement going into your ring gear. Hammer might be heavy enough. I might need to get my Baker hammer. Yeah, she's going. Here, hey, with the thud, 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 then it got higher pitch. That's because this right here is coming loose. Okay, so how do you know you drove it home? How do you know it's done? Because back up in here, let me get my camera set up for you. This right here, this is where your shims are back in behind your bearing race, and there's that other little oil shield thing. Can you move it? Negative. So, which means you're good. But just because I feel like it. Center that up. And you also get the higher pitch sound too when you know you got it bombed out. She's home. Alright, so at this point we can start putting in the pinion gear. Well we gotta go to the other side, put the bearings and all the fun stuff. We also gotta do the uh seal. Those threads right there, you wanna make sure they are completely clean. Brake cleaner, spray them down real good. Make sure there's no oil residue or anything on them because that's where your put your little bit of Loctite on that nut, crank it sucker down so it doesn't come loose on you. Clean, 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 clean. Now it's time to put your legit bearings in. We've got everything set up, proper shims and all that fun stuff. Now that we're putting our legit bearings in, legit mean not setup bearings. Don't make the mistake of using your setup bearing because this bearing right here presses on it. It's not crazy tight going up onto the pinion gear, but it is a slight press fit. So don't make the mistake of putting your setup bearing in place of your running bearing, I guess you might say. Remember your setup bearing is actually quite a bit loose, so you can take it in and out real quick as you switch your shims around. Some people don't do a setup bearing back here because you can take a punch or an air hammer or something like that and hit right here, right inside that divot, and drive this back out of this uh bearing right here so it's totally up to you how you want to do that just don't make the mistake of using your setup bearing so it's going to give your pinion gear too much uh, slack inside the bearing right here so as the gear loads up on the ring gear it'll cause the end play here to move quite a bit and it'll end up it'll end up wasting your bearings and your gears so that's a lot of money in gears it's just a for a simple mistake of forgetting your bearing so be sure to put on your good bearing now we're going to press this on with the yoke so something to be mindful of, I'm pulling the yoke back out again. Like I said, I got to put that oil slinger in and the oil seal. Got my little torque wrench out and just to double check my preload by changing it out from a setup bearing to the a, I'm good to go bearing, it actually increased my preload by quite a bit by like 10 inch pounds. So I'm going to pull that bearing back off again. I'm going to knock it pinion back through that bearing and probably put like a 3,000s, maybe a 5,000 shim in to loosen that preload up a little bit. It's because it's right at 30 and I want it in the 15 range. So that's something you need to be sure if you're using a setup bearing, that'll get you in the ballpark apparently. But going to your final bearing, it actually tightened up quite a bit. So here we go again. Now that that pinion gear is pressed up inside that bearing, take your setup nut, which again, I probably said earlier, three quarter 16 nut. Don't coil it up like this so you don't hit your threads. Take them back it up till you're probably about a third of the nut coming over top of the threads. Take you a heavy hammer and just tap it. The pinion gear will walk right out of that bearing. But don't hit it hard. Like I said, just tap it. It'll walk on out. If you hit, start hitting it hard, you know, you start distorting things. So just take your hammers and just tap that like that. Little by little, she comes on out. 
Went through a shim pack. I've got a shim right here at about four and a half thousandths. So I'm gonna add that in there, put this mess back together, and we'll test the uh, pinion preload again. Adding that one shim, put me at 18 inch pounds. So I am good with that. So now I'm gonna pull the yoke back out, pop my seal in, and I've got my oil slinger washer back there. So I'm gonna, yep, just pop that yoke out and put my seal in. Uh, put the lock nut on with some red Loctite and call it a day. Well, for that. Because you'll put your thread locker stuff in there, so you want it as clean as possible to get a maximum bite. Honestly, this bad boy torqued at 180 foot pounds with a lock nut. I can't see much reason for it ever coming off, but hey, do the proper thing. Put your red Loctite in. So to put that seal in, I took some old bearing races, and yes, people, you guys are catching on. I can say bearing races all the time because they come in handy. So if it's that bearing ratio there fits that diameter of that seal, stack these right here because it got out past the pinion. Then I used that right there, the hammer, and drove that baby on home. And I know there's gonna be somebody out there say, well, all you gotta do is take a hammer and just tap around it and stuff like that. But you know how you tap on one side to pop out this side, tap this side. I got zero patience, people. I got zero patience. And I'm really tired of fooling with this thing. Putting it together, taking it apart, taking it apart, blah, 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 blah. I want it done. So I stack up my tools, make it simple and easy, get it done. Now what I forgot to mention is before you put your seal in, be sure to take some uh, lithium grease, white lithium grease, and grow around that rubber lip. And to make sure that your pinion isn't running dry on that rubber so it doesn't scar it up. And I also put a little bit of axle grease around the, um, not like uh, bearing grease, but that stuff right there. I mentioned the, me using this seal right here. If you see right there, it's got that metal lip. Your actual seal is up inside the metal casing here. And this yoke has a metal lip here. This metal lip will end up inside this metal lip, which will help protect keeping some junk out of there. If there is enough gap there that if he wants to like, uh, go play in the creek or something like that, that'll run out. But it'll keep a lot of the major debris from getting up into that seal. Not a cheap seal O'Reilly's. I think it was like 40 something dollars. I'll give you guys part number here in a minute because it's like right there behind me and I'm going to tighten it up. So it just dawned on me why I wanted to use that seal. So I thought I'd tell you guys about it. So before you start the pressure bearings, get you a clean surface here. I wrote gear on this side because that's how I'm going to separate my shims. This is the non gear side. These are my setup bearings, so I'm setting these out of the way so I don't get them mixed in with my bearings to be pressed. Let my carrier flip it. Pull my setup bearing off. Keep them separate. Here's my shim stack for the gear side. Here's my new bearings. Three forty nine. Three forty nine. What I'm looking at is the numbers right there. I always double check myself to be sure I'm grabbing the right bearings before I press everything on. Okay. Your side. The brace goes with it. Shim stack on place. Now I gotta find. I'm gonna get my little tool to set up on top of this to press it against this so I don't get it against my cage. Be right back. Now here's the bearing to be pressed on. This is an old junk bearing where I split to get it off. You can see the fracture inside there, it came right on off, but it sits right there perfectly on the inside of that. So I'm going to use that to press the bearing on this. So here's my setup on my press. Press plate here. Got me a towel here. It's nice and clean so I keep my parts clean. Shim stacks in here. Bearing sitting here. And my tool that rides right on the inner race of the bearing here. Then I'll take my other press plate. Get in here and kind of get it balanced on there a little bit. And get my press going. And try to eyeball it to where you make sure you're pressing right in the middle of it. So for right now, I'll take out the press plate. Get my 
press kind of come down a little bit. Tighten this up. Eyeball, it looks like I need to come over this way a little bit. He's come back a little bit, get it as centered as possible. Alright, there's that. So now that we've got this bearing pressed on, i got to figure out something to block this up with. So I'll find me another one of those bearing braces to block up right there so I can press that side. So went over to my bearing race driver set right there. It's got fit in there just perfect. So I'll put this one on bottom. Use that old bearing race. Oops, hit the camera. Use that on top, and we'll be good to go. So I put that aluminum plate right there from the uh, seal bearing driver set right there on that. You can see I turn the cage just fine, which means there's no pressure on the cage whatsoever. Now we'll set the bearing up here and get ready to press that. Proper shim, bearing, and that, and I hope I've got enough room to put my plate in there. sure you can turn your cage good that means that you're not putting any pressure on it right there I think it's bummed out yep pretty good okay we got our indicator set up how much backlash now that we press the bearings on and everything we want to double check this, make sure we're good. So I'm pulling down on the gear, take out the backlash, zero this, push up. I'm at seven and a half thousandths. I am totally good with that. I think it's, uh, specs are five to, between five and ten thousandths. So I'm at seven and a half. I'm cool with that. Yay! Oh, we are done. Time to put the axles in. Yay! Party! The torch setting for your caps. For the carrier, 60 pounds. Clickety clickety. I'll give you guys a little bit of a tip here. Here's the two piece axle for the central axle disconnect that comes in through here, right there. It joins it together. You got the two splines right here. This collar slides. Lock, engaging the two axle pieces together effectively making them one piece now there's one thing that a lot of people overlook if you've got one that's really hard to engage there could be a reason why there's a bushing right there at the end of the axle as you see this bushing right here has seen better days what would happen is the end of this right here and the end of that right there, where this right here is busted out, it'll allow that axle to kind of get a little, I don't know, crooked, cattywampus, whatever term you want to use. That will make this right here hard to engage. It could possibly cause a little bit of vibration because if that axle isn't sitting flat against this and if our bores wore out, it can allow this piece and that to you no know, flutter a little bit. So what is the solution? Ta-da! YBAX014 part number 18060 Yukon number pull that bushing out of there I don't care if you gotta bust it I don't care what you gotta do but get that bushing out put that new bushing in I'm using my little two pound slide hammer puller set put this little flange down side there you'll see it better once I pull it all the way out but I just wanted to show you guys how well it's working you hammer it down in there because it's kind of a tight fit then you're gonna screw this rod all the way down side there which spreads those fingers you can see I'm trying to find some way you can see. 
you see the tip of that rod come through right there which spreads those fingers out right there it forces those fingers to wide to hook into the bottom of that bushing then you take a slide hammer pop it up watch this sit up Ta -da. and as you can see how it grips the edges of it pulls it right out of there so much easier took me some brake cleaner sprayed down side there got it good and clean install your new bushing take you a soft faced hammer driver home all good to go so sliding everything back in place I put that in and that shaft look at that so much smoother it's the way it's supposed to be and line up the splines see that's how it's supposed to be right there much better we'll slide those axles in now and right inside where i've got my finger right there that's the edge of the seal right there don't get rough with it slide through very gently so you don't damage the lip on that seal Sometimes in order to get that other shaft in, you gotta use this one to help feed it on through. And you can see right there where the two pieces are. Now we take this one. This shaft on back, we don't need it in the way right now. Take this one, push it on through, and you can feel it engage with the splines in the locker. So now we got a new shaft here, a new bushing right here. Now we need to take our collar and get it back inside there but in order to that do that we got to pull our axle back out some pull that back get that in slide that collar over right there that now feed your collar back your axle back in and right now the unit bearing is hitting on the knuckle, so I got to see it from that side, which will make it go on in. See right there, all this is holding it and keep from it seating, going in. Turn your brake shield up. Anyway, at this point, we got to line up those bolt holes with the right nut, with the knuckle, and blah blah blah, and all that kind of fun stuff. I can't do that and hold this ca uh, camera both, so you'll see the point. And once you get everything lined up, everything just falls right in place. And that's for the collar right now see how it slides over we're doing something different i'm not putting the vacuum cad back in we're actually doing a posi lock setup now so this is where i end the video and the next video will be how to install posi lock yeah. uh-huh posi lock next video so everyone if you enjoyed these videos hit me with a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't leave some cool comments down below share these videos into the facebook group share these videos into the forums that helps me grow whenever you see somebody asking a question hey how do i do this how do i do that and you know i've got a video share that video come on it helps me out it helps me make these videos more for you peace lady off